Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The sparkiest Commons debate of the week was over George Osborne's fiscal charter, which essentially tries to tie the hands of British politicians to a programme of debt reduction and then to running a surplus in the good years. Labour's new leadership said they'd vote with the Tories and then, after criticism from the SNP, they changed their minds, something the Shadow Chancellor John Macdonald admitted in the Commons was embarrassing. So where does that leave the opposition? Seema Malhotra, in effect, Mr Macdonald's deputy, is with me now. Welcome to you, Seema. Good Can morning. you explain what your position now is over the fiscal charter? Well, we were very clear, and our position hasn't changed. We voted for the fiscal well, charter sorry, in January. It has, changed. it has changed because you said you were going to vote it, with the Conservatives, and then you changed your minds again. In, in January, we voted with the fiscal charter that George Osborne uh, brought to the Commons then, and in fact, he has now brought four fiscal charters. We disagreed with the latest fiscal charter, and we did so because actually it's not the right choice for the economy. Mm. You can have good politics as George Osborne tries to, to achieve, but actually, if it's not good economics, you have to challenge that. We don't believe that it's right to have a target where you are basically saying you're going to put a cap on investment for the country. There are many economists, independently of the Labour Party, who have said this isn't the right choice, it can constrain governments, it's far too inflexible in difficult times, and it's the wrong choice for Britain. Do you accept it was an embarrassing U-turn? I've said this, and John said this himself, it was embarrassing, and it was a difficult time because the new leadership have been in place for just a few weeks. There was a, in a sense, not enough time to have this discussion within the Parliamentary Labour Party. And over the course of time, it wasn't just the SNP as, as is trying to be portrayed. This was a discussion where John was actually talking to colleagues, talking to economists about uh, their view, rather than saying, as he had said before, that he's going to dismiss it as a political stunt, as in fact we have challenged George Osborne before when he's come to the Commons, he actually said, let's actually now take the economics of this forward and let's say well, it's wrong for the economy and we're going to stand up for hard-working families who will suffer. Let's look at the economics. I mean, in, in essence, this is pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Mm -hmm. During, when we have a big deficit, we pay the deficit off, which Labour Party agrees with. Mm -hmm. But then he's saying, and in the good years, we build up a surplus. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the Labour Party's problem. It seems to be that you don't believe in building up a surplus during the good years. No, actually, that is a misrepresentation of our position. What we have said, so, and so you, we, you we supported in January, we supported in January that we would want to see a balancing of the current deficit. But what we have said as well is that you can have a situation where you need to invest for the future, invest in infrastructure, invest in homes, as uh, John Healy has laid out. Because what you do in that way is you invest for growth. You're talking about the future growth. You're talking about jobs uh, for the future, for hardworking families. But you're also talking about ways in which you might invest to save. Would we a, have sorry, would a future Labour government mm -hmm. under Jeremy Corbyn mm -hmm. and John McDonnell build up a surplus if the economy was going well? Well, as time goes on, of course you would want to see uh, that, that becoming a reality. But what we also say is that what we would want is that we're investing for the future. This has been the big dividing line, and I think this is going to continue as we challenge George I mean, Osborne on his record, if I can just finish this, that you can't just have a situation where you are ideologically cutting back the state, as George Osborne is. Sometimes you have to make decisions for a strategic state, working with business, working with industry, it, to invest for the future. If you look at what the opinion polls are saying and your own people studying what what mm. what went wrong in the election actually out there the public was in favor of austerity mm. and didn't vote Labour because they thought you weren't in favor of austerity you have now branded mm. yourself as the anti-austerity party and George Osborne's so-called trap is simply to say that in good times and in bad times day and night the Labour mm. Party is always in favor of spending more money there's a, an endless list of things you'd like to spend more money for mm. and many of them are very good causes but you will always spend more money than the Conservatives and that is basically mm. true isn't it well that's exactly what George Osborne will want you to believe in the way that he has represented what well here's uh, your what, chance to deny in, 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 no. in, in what mm. um, in what Labour did and how we achieved and how we balanced the uh, balance so much in terms of the economy uh, balance the keeping national debt as a percentage of GDP uh, at a fairly stable level through most of our years in government, there was an economic crisis, it's true. It was uh, fundamentally caused okay. by banks and lending. But actually what we are saying is that you can have a different alternative. Prosperity, not just austerity. And there is a turning point, I believe, this weekend. 
Just look at what you're seeing. Junior doctors out threatening to strike. You're looking at hard-working families now incredibly worried about how they're going to deal with so the drop in income of an average of £1,300 next year. Can this I be absolutely clear then? You are now an anti-austerity party. Does that mean that you vote against every single cut everywhere across government budgets from well, now on? No, of course it doesn't. And you know that, so which, Andrew. Which, you know well, which cuts are look, you in favour You know of? that, Andrew. What we're saying is, of course, we're going to lay out how we would uh, want to balance the books. And we've said that we would want to balance the current deficit. And we would want to do that e effectively by uh, the, end of, uh, the end of this parliament. But what Let I am saying is this. You have a choice about whether you invest for the future okay. or you cut ideologically Let, and ask. lead to failure. Let and that's ask. a choice I don't believe this country wants. Let me ask about a specific, very, very high profile cut at the moment, which is the tax benefits row. Would you restore all the tax benefits being cut by George Osborne? If you're yes talking about no. the tax credits, yes. the tax credits, Ta we have asked him to reverse that. We have said that this cut should not go forward, and I'll tell you why. Because this is a cut to hard-working families who are doing absolutely the right thing. It's a work penalty. So that but it's four billion worse cut than this. You, would, you would restore? We are saying we must not see that go forward from next April, and I'll tell you why. There are no transition plans that he is bringing in at the moment. If you are, what, uh, there, this is going to hit families, and not just that, you're going to see this become a false economy by people having then uh, probably not being able to pay their not being able to pay their rent we have had stories of people who were concerned so about losing their be homes absolutely clear to labor be absolutely would restore clear, the whole lot we don't believe these cuts should go yes forward no, from next april we do not believe these cuts should go forward. That's why we're and having you, this vote on Tuesday. And if they do go forward, Tuesday. you would restore them? Well, that's why we're having this vote on Tuesday, because we don't yes want them that? to go... Yes, we're saying we don't want them to go forward now. We're saying absolutely on this Tuesday. Is and this, this is the new straight-talking straight politics. Well, I just want you to be absolutely I'm being very, clear. very straight about this. You would we restore the whole We are having a debate lot. that we have called, saying this cuts, these cuts, which are worth over £4 billion, should not be going forward, because the cost to the, the, cost to the country will be greater. When you are talking about families there, who are... On the minimum wage, who, George, who David Cameron has said would be 2,400 better, perhaps is, better is off. This, is this when the actually the, the Institute for Fiscal win, Studies, can I just say the Institute for Fiscal Studies is actually saying mm. that those hardworking families would be far worse off. Which He's not telling the truth. Be. And what so, we know today, as well, from our analysis, is that right. over 70 Tory MPs have seats where their majorities which are less than the number of hard-working families who are likely to be affected Which by this. Which is why I'm trying to ask you the question, Seema. Would the, is this a vote the Labour Party on the floor of the House of Commons now thinks it can win? I believe we can. I very much hope that we can. But that will rely on Conservative MPs coming and working with us on Tuesday. And I hope that they will, because they, I'm sure, will have representations from thousands of families in their constituencies. We're talking of around over six million, five, almost six million children that could be affected mm. by these cuts as well at a time we're seeing child poverty rise and the government stopping even measuring child poverty. So I hope so that the Conservatives will imagine... So this is damaging the Tories as the 10p uh, mistake was for Gordon Brown's Labour government? I think instance. it is actually more like the poll tax. It's more like Margaret Thatcher's poll tax. And the reason why, I think it's a turning point in people's trust in George Osborne, and it's a time when hard-working families and constituencies across the country will be saying to their MPs, okay. where were you when I was about to lose £1,300 on average? And local right. authorities will be saying, uh, in, in, for okay. example, if you take Hounslow in my local authority, we could see a cut of about £17 million in our area, affecting businesses as well. OK, Seema, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'm going to make a plea to you and to all Conservative politicians as well. Can we please stop saying hard-working families quite so often? But very, very interested to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Andrew.